Hey there, good morning. Whoop, I got like a little bit of morning hair. All right, the reason why I do videos in the morning is just because it's, uh, it's just so much easier and I'm thinking about things. Um, having my coffee before the day gets going and um, I end up having a lot of, you know, client or, you know, business communications and stuff like that and I get sidetracked. So, um, I wanted to um, give an idea of, um, I was watching, um, um, The Bleeding Edge, it's on Netflix if you haven't seen it, and it's about medical implants, and I did listen, I think it was like a year ago, one of the women on it. Um, she wrote a book called The Dangers Within, which is about technology, medicine, implant industry, and the doctors who are um, putting implants in. Um, and so if you haven't seen it, you should really see it. And so for over 25 years in my private practice, um, I have let people know that, you know, a lot of these implants that people are putting in are because they're is a disconnection in the spine in the and there's something wrong with the hydraulic system that their body is not being regenerated. Their body has been cut off. So sometimes you just need to get some proper care alternatively um, to get those systems back up and running and then see what happens. Um, there's lots of ways to get those systems back up and running. Um, I do a host of things. Um, tissue, um, you know, um, tissue manipulation and opening up scar tissue around those meridians and nerve endings so that they can start communicating with the brain to be actually regenerated. So the brain is a hard drive, right? So anytime you're going to have your body cut on or you have an injury and you have scar tissue or something's happened um, or you're taking, you know, certain kind of mind altering drugs, especially neurotransmitter blockers, which are in pharmacy, epilepsy, medicine. They're usually in the medicines that people get for MS, fibromyalgia, um, uh, lupus, uh, pain, um, like a host of things, right? Uh, high inflammation. Um, people are given, you know, um, neurotransmitter blockers. You know, once you block the transmitting system from the brain into the body, especially with medications or a cut or a removal of something, I tell people, unless you have emergency you are like bleeding to death or you have something that is so beyond, you know, that's broken or fractured, don't get a medical procedure, especially something that they're going to put something in that you can't just take out. Um, and this is the other thing. Once that's done, there's no going back. There's no going back and seeking alternative, right? There's no going back and making other choices. It's just not going to, you can't. Now you have a big old scar that's cut through an area that um, a lot of those nerve passages needed to connect up back through the brain. And it could have been easily done with, you know, acupuncture, some heavy, you know, major tissue uh, opening, some, you know, acupressure, shiatsu, uh, some proper old school chiropractic adjustments. I'm talking like practitioners that are at least been doing it 25, 30 years. I do not like the new chiropractors. I don't like that they put you on machines and because they're trying to ward off lawsuits. Because, I mean, how do you sue a machine? So hard to sue a machine versus, a, you know, so they're not taking personal responsibility, right? They're more living in fear. You don't want to work, you don't want to get worked on by somebody who's like in fear, you know, who's damaged people, even in the medical industry. So um, think about the energy around, you know, getting an implant into your body that has damaged 
or some kind of surgical procedure um, that has damaged millions of people. I mean, think about the energy that's wrapped around that. Holy moly. Just uh, it's a conscious collective of, of damage, victimization, martyrdom, um, pain and suffering. Boy, is that just disgusting. So my dad used to always say when I was a little girl, you know, um, when I would kind of follow along in a group, you know, and he would sit me down and tell me, you know, like, so if these people walked to the edge of a cliff and started jumping off, would you, would you get to the edge of the cliff and jump off? Like they're jumping off. I'd be like, no, dad. He said, then don't follow the group. Don't follow the, whatever everybody else is doing. And so, you know, you get to like, you know, medicine as a feedlot. And if you've never even seen a feedlot, you know, look one up on YouTube or online and see the terrible, horrible conditions that these cows are left in and that how they're moved, you know, through gateways opening, right? And they're, the cows are like depressed and they're like moping along. I mean, that's, that's your grocery store. That's your Walmart. That's your bank. Um, that's the medical uh, association. That's the hospital. Um, there are all these, just these feedlots. Um, we don't really pay attention to what we're doing, but then we're mad. We're mad and I deserve money. And my life, I've had suffering. Well, you didn't research, you know, you didn't go get a second or a third or a fourth opinion. So whose fault is it really? It would be your fault. It was your body. You made the decisions for it. So because you were victimized, now you're going to blame someone? Because you were a cow in a feedlot just going along and expected other people to take personal responsibility for you? Just, you know... Hard love, 101, people. You got to make your own decisions. You make your bed, you lay in it, right? You sow your seeds, you get what grows. Okay, so, though they've wiped out alternative, you know, especially people like me are a total anomaly, right? The work I do, a lot of it is anomaly. I don't think that there's another person like me in the state of Nevada, except especially for a couple of the things that I do. Um, because I've learned from people who were like 90 years old, um, doing things that are old, you know, like, um, one of the techniques I do that reboots the brain that arrests disease and stuff like that. It's old. It comes from like old ancient Korea. Um, so, a lot of the things that are passed down that I trained with people are not things that you're going to learn in an education system, especially in the United States, because they've wiped out any kind of competition. But this is the problem. Now they're not going to be able to drug people. All the laws around pain medications and drugs um, are a lot of doctors aren't even going to prescribe anymore because it's going to be so difficult. And if you end up over prescribing, you could go to jail jail. Uh, and if one of your patient dies, you could go to jail and get the death penalty. So the ball's, you know, in a different court. But the problem is, is that there's no medium for you to have other choices, like come to somebody like me. Um, because you don't know that I'm out there because, you know, uh, all the government and state agencies uh, come after us, you know, put us in jail for no reason. And, and there's like over 115 alternative holistic uh, researchers, you know, people out of the box that have been murdered in the United States in like four years. I mean, that nobody has even like investigated. And you can go back in my channel and I totally, if you're watching this, please go back on my channel, Conscious of Economics and Urban Farm Project, and find my videos, Holistic Battlefield 1, Holistic Battlefield 2, Holistic Battlefield 3. Just to get an idea of what I went through. Um, and I had to do something I never wanted to do. 
I ended up being a citizen lobbyist um, because of the rights that they were taking away in the state of Nevada because they didn't want people to even have a supplement. Vitamin C would have been a felony. And doctors would have been fully in control. Doctors should not be in control of anything. Um, doctors, whether they realize it or not, are the largest criminals, uh, at least in the United States. They're the ones that register your birth so that the government can turn you into, um, you know, a vessel that's lost at sea. So they give you a corporation name and then they register your death. So, and if you've looked at the death certificates, I don't know, you should look at, especially in California. If you have a child that's been born in, in, in California, take a look at their birth certificate. What does that look like? I'll tell you what it looks like, a stock certificate. Why would your child have a stock certificate attached to their name? Hmm. Maybe because they're being sold, bought, and trade on the stock exchange, right? So the same thing applies. Nowadays, the, um, the registration of death is another type of stock certificate, right? Why is that? Well, because, you know, once you were lost at sea as a vessel, um, after you were born and you die, um, that vessel is insured, right? Oh, and we accidentally found that vessel uh, upon death, right? We claim the vessel at, at death because now there's nobody else to claim it because the human wasn't smart enough during their lifetime to claim themselves legally. So um, now we're going to take the insurance that we claimed on their vessel lost at sea that we put on it. Oh, yeah, the government gets like $350 million, case closed. And everybody else that took out a bond on you through your lifetime, which is every credit card, every mortgage, every time you bought a car, every time you opened a new cell phone, um, every time you got internet, every time that you had a bill that you paid, they, they would open bonds on you, right? So the biggest bonds I've ever seen were from an FBI guy who was an insider who was helping some people that I know um, to get their their bank note on their house. And it turned out that that they the lending company took out a $350 million bond against each one of them because both their names were on the house. Um, that they would have never known about, that you would have never been able to find out about. So no matter what, they always got paid and got paid a lot. So when they take out a bond, they have to take out a life insurance policy. That's almost like equivalent. So when your death certificate, you know, your death certificate, your stock registration comes in, that means everyone that has ever created a bond on you, which is every debt you've ever had, even medical, everything, um, they, they're all going to get paid a life insurance payment of whatever they took out, which is going to be almost equivalent to the original bond. So all these people get paid out, you know, maybe a billion dollars on your death and you get nothing, right? You don't even have the money to bury yourself, right? So um, the people around you may not have the money to bury you, but if you leave your body, um, I know this is going to sound like so outrageous, but if the body's left, they sell your body for $70,000 and traffic your body parts all over the world for science. So then they make a huge amount of money off your body as well. It's just disgusting. And then in some cases, depending on how the body is, okay, you don't have a right to your body because you're owned by the government, so you're a vessel, right? So they can dismantle your vessel at any point in time that they want to. So say you get a head injury, you're not dead. You could totally come back from that. I mean, if, if Tibetan monks can rehydrate their bodies after 200 years and come back alive, you think a head injury means you're dead? No, it means your hard drive in your brain is trying to sort things out and heal your body. It just may take some time. So they can actually, you know, because you're owned and you're in the hospital, even if somebody has power of attorney over you, that's not power of attorney over your vessel, 
right? Because you're lost at sea. Oh, look, in the hospital, we found the boat. Oh, we're going to take it apart for commerce because, you know, we can sell the sail to uh, these people and we can sell uh, the hardwood to these people and oh, um, the, you know, whatever, however they decide to license it um, as selling, you know, human body parts. And they don't even have like proper um, medical procedures or, you know, there's more procedures with the USDA and how meat needs to be handled that you're going to consume than your body parts. It's like totally crazy. So anyway, I'm just going to tell you that the biggest people, whether they know it or not, that are involved with the theft of your identity, the theft of your body as a vessel, and the crimes that are created upon it are the doctors. And they are the least people that should be trusted, period, end of story. And that's it. That's all I can say about that. You know, I'm on tons of radio shows. These are the kind of things that I get asked, that I get talked about. You know, and I'm glad that I'm finally at a point in my life where, you know, number one, I don't have anything to lose. There's nothing else that they can take away from me. I mean, you know, I live in a car. You know, that that I have done the force to do the things, you know, since I, li I have a family that has two bloodlines. We're talking good people. We're talking people that can raise the dead. You know, we're talking about people who understand, you know, long lineages of really what's going on in this planet and how that affects the, the bio suit, the spirit, you know, all these different things. Um, and, you know, I was always taught to conceal and hide and don't let them know um, because they'll harm you, they'll kill you, they'll murder you, and the population will too. They'll like try to say you're some kind of satanic worshiper when that's not who you are. It's just because of the mind control on the population. So it takes it away from who really are the bad people, you know? So I'm kind of glad that at this point in my life, you know, like I have nothing to lose. There's nothing that can be taken away from me. There is... Um, um, yeah, so, you know, like, I don't have to worry. So I had to learn law. And I started, I learned common law. And I was lucky enough that there was a group in Nevada that when, um, after the first major attack by the state, taking out 250 practitioners, and that include holistic centers and everything else, uh, from 2008 into 2019, um, and they were using a bill that hadn't even been passed through the Nevada legislature because they didn't suspect any kind of opposition. Well, I single-handedly, with the federal supplement people, kicked it right out of the first committee. So um, I kicked its butt, um, and it went down in flames um, because they could have started putting us in jail by Nevada law. I mean, I know so many practitioners that lost their houses, um, had to run for their life out of the state. It was so unbelievably crazy. And because I stood up, um, they profiled me. I was pulled over by law enforcement like every day, especially when I was going to lobby, citizen lobby in Carson City. And I had to drive. So I had people that hid me way out in the desert. And, you know, I slept there while I spend 100 hours a week um, working on, you know, testifying, providing research, you know, and I worked on 50 bills. And this is where, you know, I had known about common law before, which is the, um, you know, before they started copy pasting all this other caca on us. Um, and um, then, you know, now I'm like more involved with natural law, which is a whole other other thing you know, that I've moved into. Um, but at the time, I didn't want to have anything to do with the government. I just wanted them to leave me alone, and they were not going to leave me alone. So they, you know, doctors are the ones who, and, you know, everyone involved with the medical system, they are the ones that actually create your enslavement if you are born in a hospital, if you get a birth certificate, a registration of live birth. And then after that, you're 
family and your parents do not own you. And they can come and take you at any point in time that they feel like it. They can inject you. They can do a surgery on you. They can do all kinds of stuff. And this is the other thing, too, is if you decide to fight back, they can go to the court and force your hand. Right? So what are the answers? Is wake the hell up. Stop using the medical system when you don't need to. If it's not like a bona fide major emergency, stop going to the doctor. Stop complying because they are killing you. They are practicing medicine. They get insurance to practice medicine, not cure, not do, and to have zero responsibility and liability to anything that they do to you. They can do whatever they want to you and the insurance will pay off and you'll sign a non-disclosure and no one will ever talk about it again because you are not human legally and to them. All right. So seek out, if you need help, seek out holistic medicine. Seek out alternative medicine. Um, you're going to have to pay out of pocket. A lot of us do not accept any kind of insurance because I look at it as death insurance. Seek out acupuncture. Go to old school, you know, Asian people who probably have a special feeling for it. Um, acupressure, acupuncture, um, shiatsu, um, scar tissue removal by hand, uh, maybe some intense tissue work, reboot, um, cranial work, you know, getting everything reconnected back up to the brain so the brain can regenerate it because something's blocking um, the regenerations from happening. Get off the pharmaceutical drugs. I just did a show that I'm uploading after that was with my fr friend Bear, a medicine bear, Wipo. And most of it is talking about how he got sober. Uh, he was, you know, MK Ultra. He uh, was in the military. Um, he was um, in a blast. Um, and how he got s completely sober off all pharmaceutical drugs. And how he makes all his own cannabis drugs now. Every single drug that he needs, he can make. So, you know, start looking around and start seeing what's out there and what's going on. And animals are the same way. Mammals, horses and dogs, they're all, um, they're designed like us, you know. So sometimes they just need a little help to get over a hurdle. They don't sometimes need a major surgery. And, you know, this is... Ugh. This is one thing that really ticks me off. Chemotherapy for animals. It's like, you're kidding me, right? I mean, my dog can heal tumors way faster. She doesn't have all the emotional stuff attached to it. So I give her a little bit of medicine and those tumors just come clean. You know, I've been giving her CBD one-to-one, one THC to like 20 CBDs, right? I buy it at the recreational canna store. And she's had all kinds of little tumors coming out all over the place. They come out and fall off, come out and fall off. The one in her stomach's like gone now. So, you know, there's just a lot of other ways to deal with what's going on. And, you know, it may be scary to step out of the box. But fighting these people is not going to work because they're going to continue to do whatever they want because we're not socialized. And I'm not saying like socialism is good, but socialism and medicine, they are forced to actually take the patient into consideration, all the patients. So, you know, anyway, please go watch the documentary if you have Netflix. It's called The Bleeding Edge. And the woman in there that I read her book originally like a year ago, The Dangers Within, um, exceptionally good book. And um, do not get these implants, any kind of implants in you. You are not a car. Things can be regenerated. You are a regenerating biological machine. 
that your spirit is in. So you just got to look and, you know, go around the quack quacks. You're going to find quack quacks everywhere. There's quack, there's more quack quacks in medicine than there probably is in holistic or alternative or acupuncture. Acupuncture is 10,000 years old documented. Yeah. So how old is allopathic medicine? Uh, maybe 150 years old. Yeah. Okay. For Jalene Dolgoff, Conscious of Economics, do not get cut open procedures. They cut the nerve passages through the muscle tissue and they may not ever reconnect back up to your brain. This is the number one thing. So you lose the ability to regenerate that area ever, ever. And we all have pain, huge amounts of pain. Just got to find the right ways to deal with your pain until you can get through whatever it is. And it's always emotional. Always. There's always something in there. 